So it's an absolute war zone out there again if you're an altcoin trader if you're trading bitcoin you're basically up from yesterday so you just totally relax at the moment so uh, we're going to deal with these altcoins guys i've got tons of levels for you i'm also teeing up a trade right now uh, on ethereum that could be playing out we, i'm going to explain to you why there's also a longer term picture and then get your charts out Give me your tokens. I've got levels for you. I've got areas for you guys on multiple tokens here. I'm going to look through some of them. Uh, some examples, I've got ICP, Casper, AVAX, DOT, ADA even. I brought out the Dusties. I'll explain why uh, as well. So we've got a lot to talk about here. Don't panic. We're going to see these levels and uh, we're going to sort it out this weekend. Let's, uh, let's get right into this. Who just posted in the chat? We're fucked. Sell everything. Who just said that? Did I see that somewhere, right? Did somebody, did somebody just drop that again? Look, guys, it's not pleasant out there. If you're an altcoin trader, they're sweating us out one more time. But I'm going to tell you why uh, I think they've been doing it. There's a little options close out uh, at the moment. I'm gonna, I mean, we're going to get deeper into that now. But uh, we're pretty much pushing into levels here where max pain uh, is situated. So maybe this is going to be an opportunity to grab a couple of longs uh, based on what is happening. So if you look at banter bubbles, I mean, this is just disgusting uh, what is happening here. I mean, even this Pulse X, which used to be green on red days, is, is down 16%. It's an absolute mess. Tao, after that Binance listing yesterday, well, that's just been absolutely punished. And look, it's just a mess. If you're looking at your portfolio, well, I'll give you a tip. Don't look at your portfolio. <laughs> Now's not the best time to be looking. Uh, if you're sitting in leveraged trades, well, you are moving around you are pacing up and down the room and uh, i feel your pain but there might be an end <laughs> there might be an end uh in sight so let's just uh, let's look at btc quickly uh before we get into more of the more of the juice or let's call it more of the mess uh out there and uh, just try and see what we are looking at uh, at the moment so this is btc on the four hour that we're playing with and uh, you can see we've had a nice little push down uh, into uh, well we're trying to push down into the 68 800 region now remember yesterday and the previous day and in fact for the whole week this has been a weekly level uh, for us this has been a major level of interest for us and uh, you know it's, it's it's basically i wouldn't say it's the end of the world uh, if we lose this level but you can see now with this rising trend that this is definitely uh, on the correct side of the fun line for now so uh, what we want to see is if we are going to push down we just want to see it push off this trend and horizontal so a big number for me 68 800 that is still the same level that we liked yesterday the day before and the day before and uh, it might be coming into play again and i'm going to show you why uh, they could test us uh, a bit later today then uh, if we lose this trend okay let's be prepared for all situations here if we lose this trend on btc we are potentially looking lower i don't want to go much deeper and darker than 67 600 Okay, so these are the big ones that I'm watching now for the next, say, 24 hours, 48 hours. This uh, is what I'm looking at at the moment. So these are the big levels uh, that I'm eyeing out. And uh, look, it's not going to be a fun ride if they're going to take us uh, below these trends. But we don't have to get, look too too far ahead yet. We just watch exactly uh, what's in front of us. And uh, when do we turn bullish again? Well, we turn bullish if we get a nice little bounce at the 68,800. Or if they start pushing us up again from here and we start reclaiming the 69,700 region, then we can start getting a little bit more comfortable again because that was that 382 fib that we had a massive bounce off yesterday uh, on that PPI. And then earlier today, they ran it again uh, up that uh, up that uh, 382. So uh, Bitcoin traders, you are happy. You are relaxed. Altcoin traders, fuck, isn't there a bit of pressure? A little bit of pressure out there, I think, to say the least. Uh, I know Ray has been squeaking uh, in his chair like, uh, like quite a bit, quite a bit, quite a bit. Pressure makes diamonds. Pressure makes diamonds. It's tough out there, especially if you're trading Celestia. Is, is anyone else trading Celestia still? <laughs> that's Celestia. Uh, that's that's the end. Okay. Why is the price potentially pushing down? Okay. So there's multiple reasons why the market could be moving down right now, but this is something that you need to consider. Okay. There's uh, options data here. We got 21,000 BTC options are due to expire. Okay. Max pain point of 69K. Where does that take us? That takes us to that 68,800 weekly level. Uh, that is so important for the market at the moment. And then a little bit lower down, you can see there's an ETH uh, options expiration as well. Max pain for ETH. 3420 
So if you're looking at your ETH chart at the moment, where are you sitting? Is ETH somewhere around 3,400 and something uh, at the moment? And uh, this could be a reason why they're pushing the price down. Is this going to be a buy opportunity? Well, we're going to find out because we're either going to go long here uh, and get stopped out or we're going to go long here and uh, we're going to be partying this weekend. And the Monday, we're going to be uh, we're going to be singing a lovely tune. We're going to be very happy with ourselves. So uh, I'm long ETH at the moment. I'm going to show you that trade just now. And uh, yeah, well, let's uh, let's move on to some of the action in the news. And uh, BlackRock buys 2,720 uh, BTC. So, I mean, things are cooking out there. Things are looking good. And we know that is why BTC is holding up. It's just this dominance that's a bit of a bastard right now and uh, putting us all under pressure. But the end might be coming uh, for dominance. So uh, here's Joel Crypto. Again, lovely example. When you're feeling under pressure, what do you need to do? You need to zoom out. And just look at what is actually going on there. Sometimes it's very easy to get tied into these uh, hour time frames, 15 minutes, those type of candles. But sometimes zoom out, assess where we are. And uh, Joel says not only does this chart look similar, but it feels similar. This is the previous chart in 2020 all the way to where we are now. And uh, basically she's hinting or he's hinting uh, that there is a big move coming. And it's just about patience. Remember. This is the final hurdle here. Are they going to try and flush you out? They're going to make you feel terrible. They're going to hurt you because these guys want to get the best prices. They want to buy these things at the best levels before they send us to Valhalla. So understand that if you're feeling under pressure, yeah, it's an orchestrated move, especially if you're a conspiracy theorist and uh, these guys want the best prices before uh, everything starts pumping. So just be patient. Understand that being under pressure here in this market, taking a few blows is part of the process, especially if you want to be a trader. If you are holding spot and those things, you just chill. You buy your spot. If you believe Bitcoin is going to be 100K in the next six months, there's nothing you need to do if you're owning spot. You just relax. You buy your stuff uh, and you take it easy. So as long as you as long as you have the correct bias, you know, and, and you have a plan, then uh, then you are going to be fine. OK, and then some bank uh, bank uh, results are coming out and uh, JP Morgan beating earnings. I mean, this should be pretty good uh, for the US markets, uh, these type of results. So we should see some kind of relief or some kind of move uh, out of these markets. So I'm not like too stressed. Uh, at the moment uh, from that respect and uh, here's our liquidation heat map and they've come down again you can see what they've done they've taken out some of the longs one more time and uh, now if we're going to push this thing higher again it makes sense uh, one more time to send it up okay and uh, remember that every time we have a moment like this the shortest start building up and building up and building up and uh, we know now if we look at this liquidation heat map just on binance alone uh, we're looking at 680 million uh, of shorts that can get taken out if they do want to push this price up into the 70s and i can tell you what it's going to be a lot more uh, by the time we push up to 70 72 because all the bears are going to be coming in and they're all going to be thinking they're cleverer than everyone else and they're going to start shorting and then we're going to get the big squeeze so just be patient okay uh big uh, bitcoin big picture again just taking a zoom out taking a look out uh we haven't done this one in a while so i thought let's uh, let's just take a look at what is going on here on the weekly chart and uh, if we have to be totally reasonable with ourselves if we take off complete bull hats uh, and all these things and we want to be absolutely reasonable we can't say that a chart that looks something along these lines is against, uh, you know, is bearish or is against uh, good bias or good sentiment. Because if you look at BTC on the weekly chart, it would make perfect sense to me to have some kind of bullish flag or some kind of formation or some kind of consolidation in this region. Anything down uh, to the 60K, maybe a little bit lower if we have to be honest with ourselves. 58 uh, even is on the table. And, uh, you know, zoomed out bigger picture, we must just understand that as part of the bigger plan over the next few years or whatever your plan is uh, on BTC, a weekly chart that looks like this is probably quite a good thing uh, for the market as a whole. So just understand if you hit the 60K, it's not the end of the world and uh, it makes perfect sense uh, on a chart. Okay, dominance. Now, again, we're not done with this dominance thing and uh, we still haven't got to the main uh, rejection zone. So if you are feeling under pressure with your altcoins, what I can tell you is we are very close to a potential reaction zone. We are very close to a pet potential rejection zone here on dominance. What does that mean? That means you can get some kind of breather. It might be very small, but there could be a breather uh, around the corner for you. So watch this 55.1% level this is a big area and I'm, i touched on this one yesterday we've got one 
two, three weekly candles right here uh, in this region here at 55%. If we get three weekly candles on an area, we generally consider that to be a strong resistance zone or strong support zone, whichever way uh, the candles are going. So I would say look out at 55%. If you're feeling under pressure, watch this dominance chart. And uh, remember another trick when BTC is falling over, the first thing you want to do is go into the one hour or the 15 minute dominance chart and you want to just dial in you want to zoom in and uh, you want to watch this dominance closely so if bitcoin starts falling and uh, dominance starts shooting up well you know these alts are going to get hurt but if bitcoin starts falling and dominance starts slowly coming down for you guys it's telling you a story it's telling you that these altcoins might start relaxing on the current supports that they are sitting on so always keep an eye uh, on this dominance when btc is moving and uh, anastasia says with 58k alts will be slaughtered i agree Okay, so we can either look at that as an opportunity uh, or we can be absolutely terrified. So we just play the levels in front of us. We play these things uh, accordingly, but uh, watch this dominance. Keep your eyes on it. If we get this leak out in dominance, then we get that relief. We get those little bounce rallies uh, off these major support zones. Okay, so today I wanted to talk to you about something quite interesting. I have multiple reasons why uh, we need to remain bullish on ETH. And uh, it doesn't have to mean we are bullish on ETH just for today. Okay, so what I've got is I've got a weekly setup for you for ETH, which you know about. And we've spoken about this one on my show regularly. And uh, then I've also got a short term trade uh, for those of you that have the kahunas. If you want to have a go uh, at something in a red market, if you want to have a go when things are melting down, I'm going to give you a setup on ETH that I've taken and uh, we're going to try and have a go here and uh, and see if it's going to play out. So there's two setups for you. Why am I bullish on ETH? Well, number one, uh, there's a comment here, and, and it's just very interesting. Uh, Altcoin Gordon, he's also quite a quite a cool account. Uh, BlackRock now has 10 trillion under management. Okay, imagine when they put just five percent of that into Ethereum. Okay, so I mean it's a little bit high. Okay, five percent out of 10 trillion. Uh, we know that's not going to happen. But uh, even if they put 0.5 percent. Uh, into something like that or into crypto, uh, things could be very spicy there. And uh, here's Mark, okay? Mark's talking uh, or he's commenting on a couple of things, but he says BlackRock launched their digital asset fund on ETH, not Solana. There's a lesson there, okay? Remember these things. Remember these things from a few weeks ago. Uh, people tend to forget. Then there's a, this interesting thing. This is for the fundamental and the technical guys. And uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. I'm going to give you a summarized version. But if you want to understand what this new upgrade is on ETH, the EIP3074, you can follow or read Hitesh.eth. Take a look. And uh, he's explaining to you why there's this new upgrade that's been approved now um, or is about to be approved for ETH that is going to make life super simple. And uh, what does that mean? Well, follow this guy. Uh, OXN GMI. He says basic upsides of this upgrade. You can send multiple transactions in one transaction. Now, now can do approved deposit swap in one transaction instead of two. Sponsored transactions, send transactions without needing to have gas. If you're a fundamental person and you're an IT or tech person and you love this dev stuff, I mean, you must be flapping. This must be exciting for you. And uh, anyway, it's going to make life a little bit easier. And uh, th this was me earlier today, just uh, hinting at a couple of things here. Uh, so follow me on Twitter at the Lord of Entry. And uh, I'm dropping these types of things in there all day long. And uh, I was just hinting here today, 3,420 uh, is a potential zone uh, to grab a little bit of ether. So uh, take a look. And uh, what, what else do we have? Okay, uh, what else is happening in the ETH ecosystem? Well, there's this eigen layer. This is old information. Obviously, this is, uh, I mean, this is a couple of weeks old, this, uh, this tweet, but uh, we've got this massive airdrop coming. And uh, that could mean also a little bit of uh, more money or more, uh, more dollars into the ETH uh, fund, uh, into the ETH ecosystem. So that is also a bullish thing and a bullish situation uh, for ETH. So uh, if you are looking at ETH on the weekly chart, if you have a long-term view, if you are trading 3x margin accounts, if you are trading spot, those type of things, you are actually quite relaxed because ETH hasn't even touched uh, some of these levels that I've been giving you uh, over the last couple of weeks. So I remind you now on the ETH weekly chart, if you're looking for entries, you want to buy uh, in some of these zones, on some of these pullback zones. And we are pushing now into uh, this first area over here. So it's 3350. Then the next one was 3200. And the next one was 3050. Now, these are all my big time frame uh, weekly areas. These are for the spot guys. And uh, those guys who aren't that concerned about sniping exact entries. Uh, these 
these are these are zones of interest for you these are dca zones if you overall bullish on the market you want to be buying eth uh, in these regions because ultimately we are looking for some kind of much bigger move and uh, when it comes we want to make sure we are ready and we are locked and we are loaded so take advantage remember these red days are your dca days and uh, it doesn't mean we don't go lower it doesn't mean we can't go to the next level lower down but when you get these bleed up these are your moments uh, to be buying some of these altcoins these are your moments to be grabbing little bits here and there to get in the market remember try not to be the fomo one that buys after a 10 percent pump you really want to buy after a 10 percent dump even though it's frightening it's absolutely frightening um okay let's see in the chats before we move on to a couple of other things uh what is going on here jarun says dips are for buying not selling yes that's the man uh cloud says we are so fun <laughs> <laughs> Vincent says, getting us through the storm. Um, <laughs> Nitpah says, Dill's beard says, chill. Guys, just chill. It is what it is, okay? We're sitting on these good levels. We understand these charts. We know what's happening. And uh, as long as we're prepared for the next scenario, then we can always be relaxed about it. You don't have to be stressed. It's if you're not prepared for the next area and you don't know where your next move is, that can be very stressful. So that's why uh, I always like to say, always have on your, your next area prepared uh, in case we need to go lower. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Gustav is asking me about Robin Hood. I think that one did quite well yesterday. I haven't. Uh, I, I looked at it earlier today. It looked like it pumped quite nicely. Uh, that Robin Hood after we called it. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, what is Foxy? Somebody keeps telling me to look at something called Foxy. Um, oh, guys, I, I've got something interesting for you as well. This uh, this Tuka news. So stick around if you haven't seen uh, what is happening with Tuka. Stick around. I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you some interesting things on this Tuka. Um, I'm just going through some more of the chat. <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, here's a question for Nia. Um, uh, what, what Don says, wait, I've lost this chart. Somebody was talking about panicking. Joy says panic, then get on with it. <laughs> okay, nice group here. Okay, let me know in the chat if anyone managed to get Tuka on that pullback yesterday. I gave you the zone uh, yesterday. And, Not uh, me. Okay. Not this guy. Right. You obviously don't watch my show, right? I mean, you must watch my show, right? You mustn't just click the the, the chats, bro. Watch my show. Um, okay, uh, let's look at this first scenario that I'm playing at at the moment. Okay, this is for the brave. Okay, this is for the brave. And uh, what do we have here? This is ETH on the four hour. Okay, what information do we have? Okay, we've had a pump. We've had a break of trend uh, on ETH. We have it a bounce. Granted, we have it a bounce back uh, in this little box. Then they've sent it up again. Okay, now what information do we have today? We've got the options expiry with max pain around about 3,400 uh, for ETH. Where's ETH sitting now? 3,440. Where's the 618? The 618 FIB and horizontal and trend is tied in at 3,400. Okay, so with this information at hand, okay, now in spite of my long term view on ETH, and uh, if we go to 3050 and all these things I'm adding to some of my other positions that I have on Ethereum, this is almost too good to ignore. And uh, for me, I'm looking for entries here on ETH, and uh, this is my current situation. So this is me uh, on Prime XPT right now. Uh, as we speak, I'm still sitting in that $100,000 Bitcoin long that I've had multiple opportunities to close, and uh, it's still hanging around. And uh, until we lose my that 68,800 uh, on Bitcoin, I'm not that interested uh, in cutting that position. So we're going to have to just see uh, how things play out. We've got to let this options expiry and those levels uh, play out, and then. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be able to act after that. Uh, then right now I've got an ETH position in play at the moment, and uh, we're gonna add a little bit lower down. You can see I've got my stops, and uh, that wick that you saw on my chart and trend is sitting just there uh, at these lows. So you can see I'm running quite a tight stop here on ETH because I don't want to be in a situation uh, where we get a flush out and uh, then they really start sending this down. So this is my current play. I've started. Uh, I've st well, this is the same ETH from yesterday. I've added more, and uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more you can see my stops okay this is where they're sitting and uh, this is where i'll look to to exit on this particular trade but again that doesn't mean ETH won't bounce uh, at some point if we do get some kind of pullback and uh, the areas that i'm watching closely for ETH on this four hour chart and uh, i would suggest the same if you are a leverage trader you want to watch uh, this box right here 3410 and a little bit lower down 3320 
okay these two areas for me little reaction zones little areas so we could potentially get a bounce here depends how ugly things get if they get worse we're looking at this 3320 and then lower down you've got some nice horizontals uh kicking out here at 3200 and that ties in nicely uh with that weekly level uh, that I gave you guys at 3,200. So that is my current plan on ETH. If you are a spot margin trader, look at the weekly chart, play around the weekly chart. If you are a leverage trader and uh, you're feeling a little bit frisky today and uh, you've seen the information available to you, and uh, then you can have a go at this. So uh, tight stop, just look after yourself in case they want to send us a little bit lower. Um, okay, what, 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 what else we got? What else we got? Um, make money, travel, enjoy, says, what do you think of Link? Look, I think the general view here on these altcoins is they've been dripping. They've been bleeding out. We got this dominance pumping and uh, we understand the crypto market. What we do understand is that they like to reverse things when we least expect it, okay? They like to reverse things when you're feeling super bearish. And this is why I'm running this poll again uh, in the chats today. And uh, let's uh, let's pull this poll up. I just want to see the, the current sentiment there. Uh, yesterday, you guys were way too bullish, okay? And uh, I was saying, you, the bulls are out here. And uh, here we are. So 71% bullish again, okay? So it means nobody's scared. You guys aren't fearful yet. I mean, what do we need to do here? What do the altcoins need to do to bleed you out that you are terrified? And uh, I think when we get a when a, when we get a more of a balanced picture here, uh, the the bounce might be in play. But right now, seventy percent bulls. You guys were seventy five percent bulls yesterday, uh, and we were bleeding out. So we must just watch our current sentiment and our current bias all the time. Let's just be aware um, of what of what we're doing. And uh, okay, so that's the the finishing discussion on ETH. The play there is the options close out three thousand four hundred twenty. Let's see what happens. And uh, you never know with this crypto market, they do things that surprise you all the time. Okay, never be surprised. Then I found an interesting chart from Rodolfo. He's one of our researchers and he hangs out in the Sniper Club. You can catch Rodolfo in the Sniper Club. You can also follow him uh, on Twitter, Rodolfo Pozo A. Uh, take a look at his account. He's dropping banging alpha uh, for you guys on Twitter and he's dropping great stuff, obviously in the Sniper Club for Sniper Club members. And uh, this, I found this tweet very interesting today. And uh, because I was talking to him about ETH and I was telling him about the setup on ETH and uh, how bullish I was. And he showed me this interesting chart uh, that he had available. This is basically a chart showing you the correlation and which tokens move nicely with ETH. And uh, he's basically said here, if ETH is going to move or when ETH moves, the tokens to watch on ETH strength are generally, uh, well, alternate tokens are generally BNB, Litecoin, ABEX, ABA, and DOT, according to this graph. Okay, so that's interesting. I mean, we've got ADA and DOT, the dustiest coins in history. Litecoin's basically a dinosaur. BNB has risen from the dead. And uh, well, AVAX is AVAX. So uh, I thought, let's just take a look at these. Uh, let's just take a look at these guys and see where they are. I know we've got uh, we've got some traders here that like DOT and ADA. And uh, let's give them a little bit of love. So uh, step uh, first trade or first potential setup. This is AVAX uh, on the weekly. So you guys will remember a couple of weeks ago, we went long on AVAX on that break of trend. And uh, we sent it up and we hit TP1. And uh, if we look at the current situation here, we can't be too bearish at the moment on a weekly chart on AVAX because we've seen a nice trend break, we've seen a push higher, and now we're seeing a retest coming into play right now for AVAX on the weekly chart. So we can't be that bearish. So what I can suggest here is let's watch AVAX anywhere uh, into this box over here. We're looking uh, in this entry zone that I've got. Let me just get this number uh, 44.8 down to round about say 41.6. Uh, looks like a decent entry zone. This is for spot traders or this is for DCA traders, uh, that type of thing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a trade, but these are DCA zones uh, for you guys. So if you're looking for entries, remember, you want to be buying on these red days when we're bleeding out. And uh, this is box number one. Then box number two, lower down, I've got for you uh, at 31.8. I did touch on this one. I think it was yesterday uh, or the day before that 31.8. Okay, that's where you really throw the kitchen sink. Uh, at things there that's the 618 fib that's the 200 day moving average that's weekly areas for you as well so these are two lovely juicy dca zones for you guys if you are bullish okay uh, if you are bullish long term on the market 
These are your areas. If you're an absolute bear, well, now's not the time to be shorting either. Now's the time to be sitting out of the market then. If you are super bearish, you want to be shorting on strength, on candle strength. You want to be shorting the pumps. You don't want to be waiting uh, two days for two 10% drawdown days and then opening up your shorts. Because that, remember, we've had this discussion before and we've seen this movie before. If you're shorting late on massive support areas, sometimes, not every time, but sometimes, you get these little squeezes and they send you up and they wreck you uh, even harder uh, than you can imagine. So uh, if you want to be shorting, if you are bearish on the market, what you need to do is start shorting any lower highs that you see on these candles. So you look for the bounce, then wait for the bounce. If it prints that lower high, then you can start looking uh, for your potential shorts. If you are bullish, you're looking for a nice move into these basket zones, into these nice juicy little areas. So there's AVAX for you guys. Okay, the next one we've got is ADA. So this is actually interesting to me. We've lost this rising trend. And this is a classic, uh, this is a classic uh, altcoin play here. What we've done is we've been cr climbing this rising trend. We lost the trend. What did we do? We retested. Okay, so there was your short zone for ADA traders. That was your short zone. Uh, when was this? Monday, 8th of April. The short was into the trend, if you were watching that trend. And now we are drifting lower after that little retest. So let's just take a look uh, what this looks like if we flip this thing over. Uh, let's uh, hit that guy so you can invert scale. And uh, here's a typical short scenario. So if you are looking for shorts, and um, remember, you want to be shorting on any strength, okay? It's the same principle as when you're looking for longs, you're looking for that candle, uh, you're looking for that break and retest when you're looking for longs. And it's the same principle when you're looking for shorts, you're looking for that loss of trend, and then you're looking for that pump up. But what happens a lot of the time is uh, we, the market turns very bullish and everybody gets all energetic and uh, you start forgetting uh, that there are green candles floating around and you start longing the top. Uh, of these moves and then inevitably we get uh, these reversals so a nice little setup here if you are looking for a short that's the type of setup you need to be looking for so uh, i do have a target in play here for ada okay so if we're going to get more weakness we're going to see eth drip into that 786 fib we're going to see eth drip into maybe that 3200 level and then to tie that in we're going to see ada drift into 0.51 somewhere into this region here so this will be our next area of interest for ada so if we don't bounce on this horizontal you can see they're trying to hold a little horizontal here at the moment on ada but if you want to really find a stronger zone a stronger reaction play you're looking at uh, 0.52 so this is a hot zone for me for ada traders if we do get a little bit more weakness now today you're looking for a bounce 0.52 that is your area you're looking for a bounce and then a little bit lower i'm going to give you another level in case they really want to get dark and dirty here with us uh there's one more area here for you guys that you can look at 0 0.46 okay 0 0.46 is your next banger and uh, you should get some kind of reaction there and you can see what happens every time we hit a reaction zone we get a nice little pump you hit the reaction zone you get a nice little pump and uh, we expect the same thing to happen when we push into that level you look for that pump now remember if you bearish, that can be your exit pump. So wait for the bounce on these nice little zones, let it pump up, and then that could be your exit pump uh, if you want to get out, or that could be your potential short opportunity. And then you are playing these downtrends all the way, and it's the same principle again. We wait for these trend breaks, and then we add to positions, and we can do all those types of things as we go. So remember, just look for these bounces of these strong areas, and if you are bearish, you don't necessarily want to be selling on major support. Okay, you want to sell at resistance zones. Okay, let's go. Dot. Okay, another dusty uh, for you guys. Now, dot looks very similar to ADA, except ADA is front run with that loss of trend. So that is quite interesting. And uh, you know, is that a sign of things to come now uh, for the rest of the market, especially some of these older coins? So uh, just notable that ADA has lost that trend. Dot is just holding. So what I would say here. Dot is actually in a bounce region right now. So this is a 618 fib. This is a trend. And uh, this is some horizontal in play here. And uh, if you play the trend game, what do you see happen uh, generally? We ride a trend and we bounce off these areas. So generally, the bulls are going to say, okay, well, here's a nice horizontal. Uh, here's a nice uh, 618 and trend uh, for a potential bounce. So if you are bearish, you don't necessarily want to be shorting on support. If you are bearish, you want to see this, you want to see this lose this level first and then you want to short 
the reaction. You want to short the, the green candle into the zone. So step one, if you're a bull, this is where you're looking for longs right now. Okay, you can run a tight little stop under the area. Watch out for a little, uh, little meltdown under that trend and a pump higher. If you are a bear and you're looking for shorts, you're looking for this push down, then you're looking for that bounce, just like you saw with ADA, back into your short zone up here, and then you can send this guy lower. So just a little strategy there. It's just a little lower risk strategy. So remember, if you are shorting now onto support, it's like longing into resistance, not always the best plan. Obviously, sometimes it works, but uh, generally uh, you're going to find that it works against you. So try and short strength rather than shorting uh, weakness on these types of areas. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? I'm trying to I'm trying to explain a couple of things here. Ray, am I making sense? Uh, am I making sense, Ray? Are we getting it? <laughs> okay, cool. So remember, I mean, at these moments, we tend to feel our most bearish. And this is where the most shorts start getting opened. And that's why we often get uh, these nice little bounces uh, off these zones. Okay, the next one I've got for you guys gala now i've got some bangers here i just wanted to get some levels out for you because i'm sure you guys are stressing and uh, you know you're feeling a bit of the heat out there and notable for me gala on the eight hour it's been very uh let's say it's been very kind okay to gala traders it hasn't been bleeding out too badly uh versus a lot of these other tokens and uh, i found this gala pretty interesting so uh for me if we get if we can get gala to drift down uh, into the 618 and that's just on a little bit more weakness from btc just one more push down uh, on btc it could offer you a little scalp entry here for gala uh, down into the 618 region so i would say look out for gala at 0.0538 Look out for a move into that area. You can see it's shown a bit of strength. It's fighting around uh, this 50-day MA. And maybe there's going to be a scalp here. Maybe there's going to be a little play here uh, for you guys if you do hit this little area. So look out uh, at the 618. We like the look of this thing at the moment. And then the reason I've, I've shown a stop it's this deep is because we need to understand there are wicks in this area. And uh, they might want to just come and take out uh, some of these wicks in this zone. And uh, maybe just a little fake out underneath. Uh, that's 618. So Gala for me, if you're trading Gala and the market starts falling over, look around 0 0.0535 to 54, uh, somewhere in that zone. And then again, the wheels come off. What do we do? We look for our next major reaction zone. And uh, what, do, what do I have here? I've got horizontals for you. And I've got the 786, which we know offers a decent reaction uh, quite often here uh, on these altcoins. And that is going to be at 0 0.045. 0 0.045. Uh, is your next big one for Gala. Now, remember, DCA zone, this could be a scalp zone. I mean, if they're going to melt us down this weekend, uh, we're definitely going to be getting bounces by Saturday, Sunday uh, on some of these uh, some of these next level zones. So mark these on your charts for Gala, 0 0.045. Mark that on your chart and uh, just make a note there. If we do get this weekend meltdown uh, and they want to send you lower, that's where you're going to be looking for some kind of action. Okay, Stacks was an interesting one. And uh, this is now, this is a high risk play, obviously. Um, we know Stacks likes to move when BTC is bullish. Okay, Stacks likes to move on BTC strength. And uh, this is a risky play, obviously. So uh, you can look around in this box. I wouldn't go big at all. What you want to do is see some kind of movement in this area, some kind of consolidation. You just want to see some action here. Maybe a couple of lower, I mean, higher lows. And then you can start looking uh, at something here with stacks. And then you can potentially ride that up. But we are in reaction zone number one. We got to see how Bitcoin is going to handle. How is Bitcoin going to hold its current uh, its current region? If it's going to behave where it is, and we're not going to go much lower than that 69k, we should see something like Stacks uh, recover quite quickly. So keep your eyes on Stacks. Watch the 618 level, 2.79 down to about 2.75 watch this little box could be interesting here with stacks and also look out for fun and games in a couple of hours time uh, towards the end of market close maybe a little push lower and uh, you know maybe they're going to mess around here in the zone but just look out this could be an area uh, of interest for stacks traders and then if we have a meltdown your next big guy your next big zone if you have a meltdown on stacks 2.5 okay your next big area and uh, if you like uh, if you like trends and you like charts uh, you will see that this doesn't look quite it doesn't look quite right uh, the way this is dropping so fast okay and it's the same way when we look at bullish charts uh, we like to see consolidation to trend so to me i'd love to just see that sort of thing before you start looking for your next short uh, on stacks because we could easily uh, be playing this game 
at the moment. So watch these areas. I mean, this is quite a vertical uh, looking chart, but look what happened the last time uh, we went so vertical. They gave us quite a sharp pump higher up. So here we go again. We're going vertical again. Where do we get this pump? Is it over here now or is it at the next uh, potential reaction zone? So just look out for these areas. Play around with these areas. Keep a watch on them. And uh, then you can start dialing in 15-minute charts, those things. And you can start looking for market structure. And uh, then you can start seeing if you can react uh, on those levels. But again, eyes on dominance all the time. Watch that dominance and uh, refer back to it. Go to the one-hour dominance chart. Take a look at it. And you want to make sure dominance is drifting down. If you want to be trading outs of these supports, you need dominance to be drifting down. Okay. Um, let's go. You got alarms going off here. That's rune. Um, okay, here's ICP. Also, looking like gala in the sense that it's hanging around a 50-day moving average. Okay, looking interesting here. It's on a basic support level, the 50-day MA. We know we get reactions at the zone. That is why the breaks got put on the first time and the second time. And uh, now we are moving into interesting territory here for ICP. This uh, trend is also looking horrific, the way they've dropped it down. Where do we get our bounce? Where do we get our next reaction on icp is it something going to be uh, along these lines where we where we clean out the 618 and horizontals here or are they planning on sending us f much further down uh, before they hit us back uh, on this next trend so you got to play the game carefully you got to watch your btc but what i would say here icp if you get this little drip lower i would say icp watch 14.6 Watch that type of area, nibble around in that zone. You can see why this could be an area of interest. You can see why uh, this could be a potential zone uh, where we get a reaction uh, on ICP. So look out for ICP here. Could be an interesting one. And uh, I mean, these geez, Ray, these charts are looking vertically, uh, vertical <laughs> like down on these trends, bro. It's, it's quite a sweat out. I'd love to see that, uh, that Celestia chart, is it? I haven't looked in the last while. It might it's be getting to my Celestia's off the watch list. Gone. I guys, I actually, I was charting Celestia earlier for Sniper Club, and I think I've got to pull this out. We, we'll take a look. We'll take a look. Um, okay, guys. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see who else is in the chat here. Let's see what's going on. Um, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, Ocean. Uh, yeah. Ka Ka Chatoa. Chatoa wants Ocean. I've got Ocean for you. I think Ocean is also going to move into a zone for you guys and uh, a zone of interest. Put it that way. Um, okay. Let's look at. Phantom. Okay, so here's Phantom, interesting zones uh, playing out here for Phantom. So again, we had such a strong pump last week. There were so many bullish things happening on Phantom. It was looking good, but the dominance is not helping us. And, uh, you know, we've got a general meltdown now in the market. So uh, what do we pay attention to? Again, Phantom, you want to watch hot zones. You want to watch your reaction zones. You want to see where uh, this thing could potentially bounce. But what I don't like about this current altcoin market in fact i'm hating it is we're getting these beautiful moves and then they round tripping us all the time they keep sending us back uh, to where we started they're not giving us uh, any continuation here they're not letting us get that uh, get get into fifth gear the way we want to um if you are trading phantom what i would say here watch the current region where you are right now watch this area uh, let's see what happens around the 618 and then notable zones for you on phantom you've got 0 0.82 that's a notable area for you 0 0.82 and then a little bit lower down you've got 0 0.78 okay those are two notable zones and again depends on the size of this meltdown i would say watch uh, watch the dominance the minute we get a dominance rejection uh, at that weekly level then we should see these altcoins starting to relax uh, in these areas and then maybe get a little bit of energy so just make sure you're tying your dominance rejection into where these else are sitting on support if they start tying in together and uh, btc is sitting on a nice level as well then you should see some kind of move out of these altcoins um okay here's ocean moving into the hot zone okay mark this one on your charts this could be one that you get an entry for at some point today this is moving uh, into an area of interest here so ocean traders drifting lower and uh, it looks like they're going to tee it up quite nicely here so 0 0.94 Okay, if you are looking for a trade here on Ocean, it's an AI play, 0 0.94. You're looking for some kind of reaction. And uh, the play is going to be something uh, along these lines. You want to see this dip here. And then you're just going to look for a bounce into this trend. 
Okay, once we get to this trend, we can decide how bullish the market is. If things start breaking, there's different trades will be here next week, uh, setting up these breakouts and these type of things. But uh, the first trade you're looking for is a nibble in this nice little reaction zone. And uh, maybe we spend a, a day or two there in that area. And uh, then you can start building a little position uh, for the next move up. So eyes on ocean at the moment and a uh, nice little zone. And then let's mark one more level. And you can see if you, if you just zoom out a little bit, you can see immediately where our next zone is going to be here for ocean. You can see this is a hot zone, uh, a little bit lower down. Okay, so both of these look like great areas uh, where we can get a scalp, where we can get a bounce. And uh, ocean, one more time, 0 0.95, 0 0.94 to 0 0.95, a little bit lower down. Look at this, 0 0.81. Okay, that's lovely. Look at this guy. Uh, lots of resistance here in the past. Look at the bounce there when it was support and uh, watch that area. Hot zone for me for Ocean. Looking for a bounce there uh, as well, potentially. So mark these on your charts. Again, always prepare your next level. When things are melting down, understand your existing level, understand your next level so that nothing uh, takes you by surprise when it does start happening and then you are prepared uh, for the move. I saw a comment here about Cass. Uh, just trying to find it, just trying to find it, just trying to find it. Uh, I've got a cast chart for you guys, funnily enough. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I, look, I can't find it now, Ray. If you see that cast comment, please pull it up. Um, okay, what else we got? What else we got? What else we got? Ondo. Okay, so this was also very interesting. Oh, that's actually reversing now. Um, I was going to say Ondo, RWAs, uh, is showing some strength. Okay, we had a nice bounce now while the market was falling over. We had some strength. Uh, from Ondo, uh, maybe an hour ago, just before the show started. And uh, that's why I wanted to bring this one to your attention. I just wanted to highlight tokens that are performing well uh, when there is a meltdown. But uh, now I see they are reversing it at the moment. So if you are trading Ondo, there's a couple of options for you right now uh, that you can look at. Number one is you can zoom out and you can say, okay, cool. What's happened to Ondo for the last week? What has Ondo been doing since the 1st of April? Okay, it's been quite simple. It's been in this nice little range. Okay, so here we go. Here's Ondo in a range okay what did we do we rejected here we are now back at the bottom of the range okay so there could be a simple range play or range trade for you right now uh, for under and your target would be very simple the top of the range because you want to play the range until it breaks you can't assume this time is different if you assume this time is different every time you took a trade uh, you'd be confused it would be very it would be a very tough uh, environment that's why you play trends until they break you play horizontals till they break break you play resistance uh, till it breaks remember at some point it breaks does it break to the downside we don't know does it break to the upside we don't know but uh, at some point these areas break but if you're looking for percentage trades you trade these areas you trade these ranges and right now ondo is moving into the range low okay so if you're a range trader and you're looking for a move on ondo 0 0.738 okay your range low 0 0.738 for ondo if it loses this area your next absolute banger okay this is where you're firing up the trades uh, is basically a round trip to where we traded ondo originally when the RWA narrative was so hot. And uh, here we are, your next zone uh, for under is going to be 0 0.64, okay, 0 0.64. So your option number one for Ondo, you're looking for a little scalp, a little range play here. Uh, look out for that wick, obviously. Look out for this little wick here uh, in this little region. There could be a little scalp here for you for Ondo, 14%. Alternatively, if they're gonna send you lower, you kick back, you relax, you chill this weekend, okay? You don't get worked up. You let this weekend play out. You let them melt you down. And uh, you'll generally find if we have a meltdown weekend by Sunday, sometime during Sunday, uh, things are looking a little bit better and uh, there's some kind of recovery happening. So don't get caught up uh, in weekend trades. You know, see, look for your entries now. See if it works. Uh, if not, just relax. Don't get caught up in it. And uh, just mark these levels on your charts. And Sunday, come back and look and see where we are. Uh, on Sunday, maybe uh, we'll be getting these uh, these next areas for you. So uh, just to wrap up, Ondo, uh, 0 0.64. And uh, currently where we are, if you want to back a range trade, 0 0.74. That is what you're looking at. Vincent is long-term bullish on Ondo. I think you have to be. Uh, you know, BlackRock's got a hold of these guys and uh, RWAs, it's the next big thing, you know. And uh, yeah, I mean, at some point, the narrative comes back. Don't forget that. Uh, gaming's going to come back. AI is going to come back. It just goes quiet time and time again. And uh, there we go. Um, see, Jer Jerun says we are traders. We can't predict which way the market breaks. <laughs> um, okay, let's go. Let's go. Who's this shouting Foxy at me? Bro, he's proper spamming Foxy here. Um, okay. 
Tron says Rune is pumping. Okay, I, I wonder if it's Runes with an S or if it's Rune, uh, the actual token. Um, okay, here's something interesting for you on Cass. And uh, look, it's a little bit biased, this stuff, because this is from Casper Enthusiast. Okay, so I think I think we know this guy's a little bit biased uh, on his Cass project. But uh, he's saying Cass could be on the verge of a major breakout. So I thought, okay, cool. I mean, we haven't looked at Cass uh, in a while. And earlier today, uh, it was showing a little bit of strength. And uh, now, look, it is melting down a little bit. So we can we can see the market is under a lot of pressure here. And uh, look, Cass, you, I mean, we can even call this one a double top now uh, in play. But uh, relative to some of the other tokens, Cass hasn't melted down as badly. Um, so uh, there is a double top here under question or under scrutiny right now. So uh, if you believe in Cass strength, well, what did we get? We got a break. We got a retest here. And uh, they pumped it up. But now we're coming back. Okay, so areas you want to watch for Cass I'd say this weekend, areas you want to watch for cash, areas you want to pay attention to. Number one, 0 0.136. Number two, 0 0.13. And then we got to ride down, okay? Then we're looking at this 200-day MA and 786 FIB, 0 0.11. Okay, you can see my alarm is set here on TradingView. If you want to know how to set an alarm on TradingView, you just go to the right-hand side um, on your on your uh, cursor. You can see there's a plus sign and you can click that plus and set your alarm. You can see I've got an alarm here at this uh, 0.116. That for me is an area where we could get our next bounce if we get some kind of meltdown. So keep your eyes on this. Put an alarm on uh, or mark this on your charts, this guy uh, at 0 0.11. Call it 0 0.11111. 0 0.111. Okay, look at that zone. 0 0.111 to 0 0.114 for me, for Cass. If they do melt us down, there's a nice little area for you uh, where you can try and grab something. Um, little Wonder says, how's FTM going? Well, we're being patient. We did look at FTM uh, earlier today. So just rewind or go forward. Depends on when you've jumped in uh, on the show. And uh, you can see where we are with FTM. Let's look at Filecoin uh, melting down right now. Okay, so Filecoin traders, we are moving into an interesting area. Okay, this is Filecoin on the weekly and uh, interesting area happening right now for us uh, on Filecoin. You want to watch anything down to 7.2. Anything down to 7.2 here. You Max, like Payne, Max Payne just got hit. Uh, I feel like we you have not. Max Payne on the likes. Can we get, the, <laughs> can we get some likes? okay wow okay look at this look at this look at this this is our zone guys this is the moment right now okay we've just taken out that 69k on btc this is exciting moment for you uh let's see if it's going to hold so what are we looking at right now we're looking at this trend we are looking at the 68 800 this massive level for us this was an important area uh, for us and let's see if this is going to hold this is a very exciting moment here uh, for us so anything down to this candle low here let's see are they going to bleed us out? Are they going to kill us? Let's see what they have in store for us. You can see the bulls and the bears are fighting there. Let's look at dominance right now. And uh, we want to see this dominance coming down now quickly uh, if these ults are going to survive. If this dominance starts pumping, we're going to get a hiding. We're going to go into this weekend with our tails between our legs. Um, okay, watch this dominance here on the one hour. Let's see. In fact, let's dial in even more. Let's go 15 minutes. Okay, come down, come down, come down. Um, this is what we want to see. So we want to see this dominance melt down now uh, as fast as possible. Otherwise, it's hiding stations. Otherwise, it's pain. How are we on our likes? Are we okay? Guys, if you're enjoying the content, okay, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, all these types of things. And while we're watching uh, this dominance chart, don't forget, I've got an entire shopping list for you uh, in the description of the show. I've got all these things uh, for you uh, underneath. I've got trading exchanges, the exchanges that I'm trading on. And uh, we've also got the gummy airdrop coming. So don't forget about the gummy airdrop. If you take a look here, the gummy is launching on the 20th of April, 420. No jokes there. And uh, if you sign up and use Blowfin, you can get the gummy airdrop. Okay, so all you need to be doing is using this Blowfin exchange. Click the link in the description. You're going to get free tokens. Who knows what can happen with those free tokens? And uh, all you need to be doing is sign up to Blowfin here. Use the invite link in the description below. And uh, don't forget the trading accounts that I use. Prime XBT, Avo, Weeks. They're at the top of the list. They're all offering you uh, different deals to take a look at the exchanges. So yeah, if you haven't tried them out, 
give them a go and they've all got great sign up bonuses they are kyc friendly as well for you so take a look test them out and uh, see how it goes and those of you that are wondering what sniper club is well there's a link uh, for Sniper Club in the description here. There's also a link for Easy Elgo uh, that I use as well. So take a look uh, at the options there. And don't forget, Sniper Club is where it all happens outside of the shows. There's a lot going on in there uh, for Sniper Club. If you want to learn about trading, and uh, especially in conditions like this, uh, these are tough, tough, tough conditions. And uh, we even have a psychology uh, weekly Zoom that we do for the guys uh, in uh, Sniper Club. So we cover a lot of things there for you guys. Even when the market is bad and things are bleeding down, this is where you learn stuff this is where you learn the good stuff and there's a nice community there looking after each other uh, in the sniper club so come and join us grab that link uh, in the description and uh, I see Dylan says stay live all day bro it's gonna kill my throat uh, all the talking um, okay let's see let's just check in on uh, dominance here one more time okay as long as this dominance comes down these alts should be um, they should be okay. They should be holding their area. So let's watch this dominance now uh, closely. And uh, okay, we'll check in there now. And don't forget, guys, an important announcement here today. Okay, read Uncle Run's tweet. Okay, a few days ago, he said he posted about a content, uh, uh, about amazing content that the meme Tucker Carlson was posting. Well, anyway, Tucker Carlson is now going to be a massive, massive project. What started out as a joke is now turning into a massive thing he's getting his own channel he's getting his own alpha channel and uh, those of you that have been trading tooker colson with me uh, over the last uh, probably the last three weeks and uh, i mean we've absolutely nailed these entries if i may say so myself and uh, we nailed it again yesterday okay we were a little bit short yesterday but uh, yesterday i told you guys look for to buy on any weakness into 0.4 and uh, they came there, they visited it quickly, and they sent this thing straight back up. Now, remember, I brought this onto the show. I, I don't even remember. 3 million market cap, 4 million market cap, something like that. It's now trading at an $84 million market cap, okay? This thing can potentially go moon, okay? Colson, Tucker Colson is turning into a channel of his own, okay? He's interviewing, he's doing all sorts of things, he's dropping alpha. I mean, it's going to be ridiculous uh, what is happening here. So if you want a piece of Tuka, again, the same story. What you want to do is you want to buy on weakness. Wait for your opportunity. Wait for these dips uh, in Tuka. You don't want to go chasing big green candles. Remember, these candles are massive and uh, they are huge moves. So anytime you get a big sell or big red candles in these areas, that's where you want to be looking. Uh, to start buying uh, this Tucker, but we think long term uh, there could be a big play here on this Tucker Colson. So definitely take a look at it, get it on your watch list, and uh, get involved uh, with Tucker. And uh, it's going to be just around the corner. Okay, BTC, are you behaving? Uh, please tell me it didn't take out my stock. 68693. Let's see. Oh, okay. Whew. I nearly had a heart attack. Um, okay, so BTC, it survived. Uh, that pullback survived. So now we know. Now we have our marker. Okay, uh, you can see my stop loss was in place there. Okay, that actually nearly gave me a heart attack. And uh, this is why I strategically place my stop losses for these exact reasons. Okay, somebody asked me today on a Sniper Club Zoom uh, why I don't put my stop losses in certain areas. And uh, this is the exact reason. So now we have a marker. Okay, it doesn't mean Bitcoin's not going to come back. OK, but we do have uh, an escape of the first stop hunt there uh, that we were looking at. So it doesn't mean it's not coming back. And, uh, you know, now the strategy uh, that you can employ right now is to say, OK, was that the bottom of the move? If that was the bottom of the move, then you can move your stops up under that candle. OK, so these are the choices you can make now. So we've been sweating it out, sweating it out, sweating it out. And now we've seen a reaction uh, from Bitcoin. And uh, maybe that now was the bottom of this move. Is that going to tie in uh, with this current options expiry potentially? And uh, so watch this area now. So we've had our nice little reaction. Let's see how it plays out. And uh, you can see my ETH uh, situation here is still uh, hovering around. Let's see where we are with ETH. And a little reaction. Okay, it's not the best candle in history, but uh, you can see they did try and buy that one up there. So look at, uh, watch ETH there. They did try and buy that up. Let's see uh, how this plays out. But again, we are protected with our stops. So if it goes against us, we are protected. Look at the reaction zone for ETH. This is why we like these areas. We know we get a, a, some kind of response in those zones. Let's just check in on ETH on the full hour. And there we are. Okay, so ETH is now in the box and uh, it's reacting exactly uh, off the 618. I mean, you can't make this shit up. 
And uh, again, if it reacts on the 618, doesn't mean that's it, it's going to the moon. But you need to appreciate what these 618s can do for you. You need to understand what they deliver and what they give you uh, in the market. Okay, um, guys, that's enough talking from me. My throat uh, is killing me. You know the levels now. You know my game plan on ETH. You've got the trade. You've got the setup. Let's see if it works. Monday, we're going to be partying uh, if that thing works. If not, we've been stopped out, and it means we've had a further meltdown in the market, and we're going to pick up the pieces, and we're going to put it together again, and we're going to march forward because we know long-term, BTC's cooking. Long-term, these alts are going to pump. We know the drill, okay? So hang in there. Don't overtrade. Don't overtrade. Don't overtrade. And, uh, you know, manage your stops manage your risk and try and stay out of the market uh, on the weekend. Now, there's no private Sniper Club Zoom and there's no show for me this Sunday. I'm flying to Dubai with the boys and uh, we're going to be doing a lot of things there uh, for a conference there in Dubai. But I will be broadcasting during the week, not every single day, but you will see me uh, during the week uh, next week, guys. Have a great weekend. Let me find my end screen here. Uh, see you guys later.